To graph these inequalities without a graphing tool basically becomes an issue of graphing functions, make, knowing, making sure that we know how to graph these parabolas and other functions. The inequality part is, becomes the easier part since once you get used to it, we know that we can either go above the boundary line or below the boundary line. So the key really is to be able to graph the parabolas. So in the first case here, highlight it in blue, it's given in the graphing form, so we're going to use the vertex at 3 and 4. We need a couple symmetrical points. For this, for this one, it's probably easiest to use the zeros because we know that there's a zero at positive 1. And I'll make a little table of values here. At positive 1, y equals 0. And at positive 5, y equals 0. And since it's equal to we'll use a solid line. Okay, so I, the details I expect to show on these parabolas are a vertex and symmetrical points. It could be zeros, it could just be some other random uh, symmetrical points as long as they're symmetrical and they're clearly marked. For this next one here, we're going to graph a parabola. Now we've been given the y-intercept at negative 3 Okay, so we have a y-intercept at negative 3. We don't know where the vertex is, so for this one I'm going to use VATs to find the vertex. So the vertex is going to be at negative, negative 2 over 2 times 1, or at positive 1. Okay, so this one has a vertex at positive 1. So when I plug in positive 1, I'm going to end up with a coordinate at, uh, looks like, 1 minus 2 minus 3 or negative 4. Okay, so 1 over negative 4. There's my vertex. Okay, so 0, negative 3 represents the y-intercept. So I'm just going to use a symmetrical point to that. And 2, negative 3. Okay, now these points are kind of close together. So this is good enough in terms of what I would expect to uh, show. But I do want to have maybe a couple more symmetrical points. So I'm going to try negative 1. Okay, when I plug in negative 1, I end up with uh, negative 1 squared plus 2 is 3. So that's going to be a 0, actually. So negative 1, it's a 0. Okay, and then I have a 0 over here at 3 and 0. Okay, so there's my some other symmetrical points to help me graph this. It's a parabola facing up. It's not equal to, so I'm going to put a dotted line in. So there it is. And to solve this inequality, then, it we just need to determine that the area that's above the red line and below, since it's less than or equal to here, below the blue line, so that area above the red and below the blue would just be that region there. Okay? And if we want to, if we're not sure, we can always test some coordinates. We can test, you know, zero, zero is an easy one to test. And we can see, if we should be able to see that zero, zero does not fit either inequality. So it looks like we have, we're at least not in this region. If we want to be concise, we really should test the different, there's different regions here. There's this region out here, the region below here, the region that is a solution region here, there's another region up here, and there's a region up here. Now that's kind of overkill, but that would be a full analysis of the different regions to test. So this one here, we're going to graph a rational function and the parabola. So I'm going to start with a parabola, since we've been doing parabolas. This is given in the, the factored form, so I'm going to use the zeros. And then I'm going to find the vertex by just counting to the middle. So at negative 1, I'm going to have negative 9. Okay, so negative 1, negative 9. Just make a table of values here. So negative 1, negative 9 is a coordinate on that graph. 3, 6, 9. Okay, and then I'm going to draw this parabola in as a dotted line. Okay, so there's my parabola. Again, the details that I need are just the vertex and symmetrical coordinates. And it looks like I'm going to be above. For the second one, 
it is a rational function. Okay, and I have a, 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 a sorry, an asymptote at positive one. So I'm going to draw my asymptote at positive one. Okay, and as x goes to infinity, it's going to have go to zero. So it has a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay, so as x gets really, really big, I'm dividing by a really big number. So one divided by a big number gives me zero. So it's going to kind of go in this area here. So now I, I want to make sure that I have, I'm have i in the right quadrant. So I divided the asymptotes divided into four quadrants. So I just want to make sure I'm in the right quadrant. So I'm going to test a few coordinates here. Okay, so when x is in the positive 2, okay, when x, I'll start with the negative actually. Let's say x is 0, y is going to be negative 1, so 0, negative 1. Okay, so it's going to be in this quadrant here, so I know it's going to be a line, a solid line that goes through that coordinate and has an asymptote down here like this. Okay, for the on the other side of the asymptote, we're going to test x equals 2, y equals positive 1. So it's going to have a coordinate here. And it's going to go along the asymptote and along the asymptote. Okay. So we need to make sure that the, the graph is, or sorry, the solution then, is going to be below the rational function and above the parabola. Okay, so where are the areas that are below the rational function and above the parabola? So that's going to be this region in here. So that's going to be below the rational function and above the parabola. And this function in here, this area in here, all the way from infinity, is going to be the same. Okay, so it's going to be all the way through to here. Okay, and we need to shade into here. Okay, because I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Because this area in here is above the parabola and below the asymptote. Okay, and then since there's a boundary line right along here, we can't go past that boundary line here. Although that's below the rational function, it's no longer above the parabola. 